in my preparation of the outline, I read about a church that started long ago. And this church in 1952 grew to a number of 1,200. And there was life within the church. It's called the First Church of Newton. It started long ago. But eventually in 1972, they disbanded when they had a membership of 325. They sold the church building. And they gave, uh, they, they gave the church building, they sold the church building to another denomination, and all their property and, asset, and assets they gave to a museum. And they told the 325 uh, members, they said, the church cannot continue, bye-bye. They couldn't reactivate the church, revive the church, restore the church. Backsliding came, and there was nobody with power and fire. There was nobody with spirit and zeal. There was nobody with revelation and vision. There was nobody with concern and consecration that will say, I'll give everything it will take and raise up this church again and bring back this church again right into the bosom of the Lord and the head of the church. And they just gave up and they said, we cannot continue and they disbanded. That's when Christ has been on the outside for a long time and there's nobody to open the door for him by repentance and consecration and restitution and praying and fasting for our church to continue and I'll come back to deeper life. For our own church to continue with God's presence and with the purity and the power of the gospel. All of false ministers and all the members in the church must discern, recognize the signs of backsliding and wholeheartedly repent, fully coming back to the straight and narrow way. What are the reasons for church backsliding? When a church backslides, I've shown you now an example of a church that so backslid in 1972, they had to disband. When they had risen to a membership of 1,200 in 1952, but 52 to 1982, they were just, uh, you know, declining and decreasing and going down to the point that they couldn't continue again. They just disbanded. What are the things that usually cause a thing like that that they backslide to the point they cannot continue anymore. Or if they continue, they are completely dead. They don't have the life of Christ and the life that is spiritual within them. Let's see one by one the things that occur. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 16. For the leaders of these people, Cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. That is a problem that brings backsliding for the church. To the church. Now it says the leaders of these people. You know, sometimes uh, when you look at different Christians and different uh, Christian people, they do not respond well to a message that extras our lives and ministries. And I see a lot of that in our own church here. By our own church now, I'm talking about the national body of Deep Alive Bible Church in the whole of this nation, Nigeria. When a preacher is preaching and he talks on the promises of God, on the good things, and he's praising us, appreciating us, and he's telling us women are wonderful, and women are gifted, women are talented, 
And you women, we thank God for you because if we begin to tell all the good things we've done in this church, time will fail us to go into all the details of what you did and what you're still doing now and what you'll do in the future, all the women will stay awake. And they will love that message. But when you come to the other side, and you know there is night and day. You know there is rainy season and dry season. You know, it's not, it's not all salt in the soup. There is both salt and pepper. And you know there is the hand of encouragement and the hand of chastisement. And if it's all sunshine without the night, if it's all rainy day without the dry season, if it's all salt without pepper, there's no balance. But you see what some people like is, you know, just praise, just encouragement. But you see if we're going to tell the truth. There are times we have to discern the signs of backsliding for the local church. And as I was saying, when you talk about women and you say, oh, the women are great, the women are wonderful, the women are useful, the women are talented, the women are gifted... And you never say any bad thing, any negative thing, any corrective thing. You have all your congregation. They are all happy. But you can be happy and go to hell. Don't you know the people that dance their way to the brink of hell? And they dance all their lives and go to hell. A person can be happy and go to hell. But you know, uh, when we get to heaven, you can check up. You'll find out the people that get to heaven... And then you look at the people that get to hell. There's something you will discover on the la at that time. There will be more people that have wept in heaven than the people that have wept in hell. You'll discover many people that have been laughing all through their lifetime. You'll discover a lot of them in hell fire. That's why Jesus Christ said, Blessed are you people. He looked at them and he looked at their faces He said, Look at you weeping now. Blessed are you because you are weeping now. You are laugh at that time. Then he looked around and he saw some people that have never wept and that were not weeping at that time. They had everything going on for them. He said, if you knew the future, if you knew the future, woe unto you that laugh now. Because that other time in the future, you are going to weep without anybody being able to wipe away the tears. You know, the tears of the church is so much. That's why, if I, you know, in Revelation it says, He will wipe away the tears from their eyes. You know, if He has to do it in eternity, it means that all through life, you know, there is time to weep. And if, uh, you know, the kind of message you want, a kind of message that will say, all those women are wonderful, make you laugh, make you happy, make you jump up, there's no future for you. But you know, when you come like this, and we tell you the word of God, and we knock you, and we cut you, and we crush you, and we chastise you, and we tell you the plain teaching of the word of God, that makes you to understand that you have been going astray and you go before the Lord as if you are the greatest criminal on earth. I will praise God for you. You know, when somebody comes like that and, you know, it's just he rushes and runs to the cross and he's not even able to look up at, the, at Christ, he just falls at the feet of Jesus Christ. There is hope for that person. But the fellow that is always, you know, anything you preach is always laughing, always happy. That one doesn't concern me. I'm the good fellow. I'm the righteous fellow. I never make any mistake. There's no future for them. If you know such people, pray and fast for them. And don't stop your praying and fasting for them until they begin to cry and weep. It's only then you know that your prayers have been answered. Now, I said all that to tell you this. In this verse 16, for the leaders of these people caused them to err. When we talk about leaders, we're not only talking about 
the pastor in the local church. We're talking about the wives of those pastors. I said all the things I said before to come to the interpretation. The leaders of these people, and you women, you are leaders in the church. And you have contributed in a major magnitude to the backsliding of the local church. If people tell you you have contributed to the progress, I don't know about that. If they tell you you have contributed to the revival, I don't know about that. If they tell you you have contributed to, you know, the church being militant, I don't know much about that. But I know this, that you have contributed in a very major way, magnitude, to the backsliding of the local church. If people tell you you have contributed to the progress, I don't know about that. If they tell you have contributed to the revival, I don't know about that. If they tell you have contributed to, you know, the church being militant, I don't know much about that. But I know this, that you have contributed in a very major way, magnitude, to the backsliding of the local church. Your influence on your husband, your influence on the other women, your lifestyle in the church, your utterances in the church, your way of life in the church, for the leaders of the people, they cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. You see, this is one of the reasons for backsliding of the local church. And the word of God clearly shows many reasons why the church, a local church, may backslide. Let's pick them up one by one. Number one, the absence of leadership. Number one, the absence of leadership. In Exodus chapter 32, Exodus chapter 32, from verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not, we know not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break up the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And he said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. I have a question for you. Could they do this if Moses had been there with them? Tell me out loud. No. The absence of leadership. And in some case, his absence was legitimate. In his own case, his absence was God's will. In his own case, his absence was the making of Almighty God. God called him. In his own case, his absence was for the development of the nation of Israel to get the law from God and bring it to the children of Israel. In his own case, his calling to go to the mountain was even praying and fasting, was denial. And he got the law of God that will be preserved for future generations 
in his own case, his absence was not because of self-indulgence, was not because of pleasure, and yet the absence still resulted in the backsliding of three million people, all the nation. You see, when the pastor is not always around, and he says, I put somebody in charge, Moses put Aaron in charge. And the Aaron that he put in charge was not voted into office. It was Almighty God that gave the name of Aaron to Moses and said, He will be your mouthpiece. Look, Moses and Aaron were chosen by God. And Aaron was an assistant to Moses. And even though Aaron was chosen by God, when Moses was absent, he didn't have some qualities that Moses had. Because when Moses came back and said, Aaron, what have you done? He said, you know the people. And my consecration is not consecration unto death. My consecration is, not, is a consecration unto life. I have not got to the place where I can consecrate and say for better, for worse, for life, for death, in sorrow, in sickness. I will minister the truth. I will stay by the truth. My consecration is only for prosperity and for blessing and for life and for enjoyment. It is not for death. I have not got to the place where I can say, nothing shall separate me from the love of God, neither life nor death. And when I saw, you know the people, when I saw they wanted to stone me, and since I had not made consecration for death, I said, no, don't worry, I'll give you what you want. But I know if it were you, you don't care for death, that's a pastor. A pastor who doesn't care for death, who doesn't care for, you know, whether you abuse him, whether you go against him, whether you frown at him, whether you talk against him on your dining table in your house, a pastor who doesn't care for gossip, that's the one that can keep the church. But Aaron was not a person that didn't care for anything. Aaron cared for everything the people were to do against him. And he said, that is why I did that. You know, when a pastor is not staying in the location where we have put him to be a pastor, and it's all the time, you know, he's going to America and going to Europe and going to this and going everywhere. Look at all the churches around, all the denominations. Why are they backsliding? While they are away, a lot of things are happening. You know, let's say, for example, the pastor, I mean, a pastor like Moses. A pastor that has fire. A pastor that has the spirit. A pastor that has revelation. A pastor that knows if, a, if anybody comes to that congregation, a pastor that if a witch or a wizard gets to that congregation, the moment he comes to stand like this, and the moment he begins to open the Bible, God will open his eyes, and he will say, that witch there, you come over here, and you know Moses, Moses will not waste and say, everybody, go and look for stone. And now when a pastor like that is around, which is clear away. Am I right? A pastor that when he sees a little sin there, little immorality there, I will stand up and say, you, you did this, make announcement to everybody. And now when a pastor like that is around, people sit up. But when a psychedelic fellow, easygoing fellow, a merry fellow, and a, a person that is that addicted to enjoyment, easy life, like Aaron, when he's there, all the witches now can come in. Moses is not around. Moses is not here. All the compromisers can come in now. All the people that don't pray to know the will of God before they get married, they can do whatever they like now. And all the people that, you know, will tell lies and will give uh, testimonies that are not true, they can come in now. If uh, Moses is there, you dare not do that. You might lose your life. But when the pastor is absent, pastor, stay in the church. If we are going to keep the church from backsliding, stay in the church and stay at the pulpit. Even when you are not preaching, stay there. You know, that's what I do in Lagos there. Eh? Even when I'm not preaching, I still all the five services on Sunday. Even when all I'm to do is just to announce the song, I stay there. And while I'm staying there, you better believe I'm looking at everything that is going on. 
And if somebody preaches something, if he misses sound doctrine by half an inch, immediately he finishes that message, I call him. I say, you miss sound doctrine by half an inch. Now, when, when a pastor like that is all the time sitting down there, all the time watching you, it will be difficult for you to backslide. You know, that, that one alone can keep deeper life and save deeper life. If all you that are pastors, all you that are coordinators, all you that are zonal leaders, all you that are women representatives, if you always stay, we want you to look at the house fellowship. All you that are house fellowship leaders, all you that are area leaders, you are always there, always there, always there. That will keep this church from backsliding. Because God has given you the word. He has given you the fire. He has given you the authority. He has given you what the church needs. But if you are absent, then Aaron will come in. Look, look at your life work. Look at uh, Moses. Moses had been laboring for these people. And he just went away. You know how many days? Forty days. Six weeks. And before he came back, Everything he labored on, six weeks, everything had been totally destroyed. I'm hearing of some people that say, I know I'm a pastor, I know I'm a leader, but uh, give me permission. Let me go to America to study for three years and then I will come back. What will, have hap what will happen to your congregation? 1974 and 75. I received invitation from America from a particular Bible school. A friend of mine, in, you know, that I knew in another place before, and who loved me and you know, wanted me, he wanted good thing for me. He had uh, spoken to the registrar of that Bible college, and they wrote to me, and uh, they said, now you can come. And he said, now I shall come, this is my time, I shall come for three years, and I shall come and get, you know, a degree in a theology, because if we're going to do this work of, you know, of church work, we need degree, we need masters, we need diploma, we need this and that, that I should leave. And deeper life was already on at that time. I looked at the invitation, I looked at the privilege, I looked at the opportunities. Uh, you, if you know me, it's difficult for me to spend a week outside the congregation. I'll be feeling like fish out of water. I won't enjoy anything I eat over there. It's difficult for me to be away. Even when I go to preach in other places, you know, there's no place like home. You know, you come back and you like to be at the pulpit. Even if it is to sing Jesus only, Jesus ever. Jesus all in all will sing. Savior, Sanctifier, baptizer, healer, and the coming king. We don't hear that song any other place. Have you been hearing it other places? Except those who hear it from here, and then they take the fire from here. And you know, when you go out here, you go out there, you don't hear any song like, deeper, deeper. I pray, I want to go deeper. You don't hear any song like, called unto holiness. You don't hear any song like going up higher. All the song they are singing is just with guitar and, you know, mixing and dancing. When, you, when you're in a place like that for one day, you want to come back home. And when you come back home and you hear the people, the crowd of children of God, they rise up and they say, Jesus only is our message. Jesus all in all will sing. Then you know you are back at home again. But anywhere you go, you don't hear all that song. The real word of God, you'll be like fish out of water. And I rejected all that offer. All the things that they were given, I rejected. Do you know that Bible school are still calling me this year? I've received their prospectus. I never applied. They said I should, uh, you know, come for, you know, post-graduating, you know, this and that, that they have heard about the work I'm doing, now I need this, now I need this. And, you know, the names of uh, some schools, very high schools, Fuller Theological Seminary, sent, uh, you know, brochure to me, letter to me, and a scholarship uh, form and, you know, all the projects and everything, what I could just this year. And without, I didn't apply for that. 
they are calling me to come and do this and do research and then they put at the so in the letter they said we will also give you opportunity to share with the student body what is going on in Africa you think I will reply such a letter now you see when the pastor is absent when you do not stay in your congregation where you are you see the church can backslide so number one is the absence of leadership why churches local churches backslide is leaders bad example let's look at jeremiah jeremiah chapter 50 verse 6 jeremiah chapter 50 verse 6 my people have been lost sheep their shepherds have caused them to go astray they have turned them away on the mountains they have gone from mountain to hill they have forgotten their resting place and it's a bad example of the leaders that caused that you see there's much on leadership if the church is going to remain if the church is going to stay in the real center of the will of god the leadership will have to live good example good example the third reason immorality and love of money within the leadership that causes backsliding immorality and love of money within the leadership in first samuel first samuel chapter 2 from verse 12 now the sons of eli were sons of belial they knew not the lord and they were priests they were leaders and they were people that were supposed to show the light and the truth to the congregations of Israel. God had placed his name in Shiloh. And these people were there. But they were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Verse 13. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, and a priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. He struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest. For he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him nay. But thou shalt give it me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For the people abhorred, they hated, they resented the offering of the Lord. When things like this happen, such people in leadership, they cause the church to backslide. Now, if we say this, and we do not bring it home to ourselves, we do not understand that we are guilty and that we are causing backsliding in the church. When we come to 
a workers' retreat, or we come to leaders' congress, or we come to a meeting that brings us together with other people, then you see this attitude. And some of the people, pastors, leaders, they will come early and take all the good mattresses. They put all their loads there. We make announcement, come and register. No, they have secured their place. And they're not going to budge. Then maybe we have a nursing mother. And we need mattress for the nursing mother. And the three-month-old baby cannot say, you know, be put on the bare ground or on an ordinary mat. We need mattress for maybe that mother and the child. And we say, ah, sister, you are a single sister. You don't know, uh, you know, you are still strong. Look at this nursing mother. I'm a woman representative. What do you mean? That nursing mother, who is she? Come, nursing mother, who are you? What do you do in your state? I am house fellowship leader. Tell the people who told you to come and take my dress for me that I'm a woman rare. Therefore, if, you're, if your child is going to have cold, good luck to you. The people, the higher we go, the more respected we should be. Therefore, you go and find what you are going to use. Or if you are distributing food, and uh, were it not for what we have written on the program here, that there is no special food for anybody, no special time of serving for anybody, the state of Asia's wife may get to the kitchen and uh, said, who is in charge of the cooking here? And, uh, and they say, Sister any what's the matter? Shut up. I don't talk to people like you. What's your name? Who are you? By the way, from which state are you? You've not seen me in the, on this ground before. When were you born again? Who are you? And the person begins, uh, uh, please, ma, I am sorry, ma. I don't, no, 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 what's your name? From which state are you? Don't you know I'm state overseer's wife? My husband is hungry and is waiting for me to bring food and to get to him. And you, I'm sorry, ma, I'm sorry, ma. Sorry for what? You people, a person like you should not be invited to this meeting like this. You don't look at people's face before you reply them. And the person begins to kneel down to state of Asia's wife. The quarrel is not finished in one hour. And then she gets in there, takes milk, takes bomb vita. Sister, we bought this for the nursing mothers. Nursing mothers? Mo nursing mothers are greater than my husband's state of Asia. Ah, and sister, I didn't know that it's for state of Asia. What's different from what this of now Fini has did? Food, meat, milk, gari, rice. That we cannot show. The retreat or the congress is only Monday to Saturday, six days. Can't you watch with me just one hour? Celestial people will fast for seven days. CAC will fast, dry fast, seven days. Here you are. You can, can't you fast one day? That state overseer's wife will fight on Gary, on rice. No wonder the church is like this. And if we say, now everybody go to the hostel. Now, all of us who are going to sleep at the hostel, state overseer's wife can hear that, will never budge. Will stay in a place, fan. I don't know whether they even have air conditioner there now. They get a lot of things that I don't know anything about that I never get permission for. That's why I've been very strong in some things I'm saying this uh, Congress. And, uh, you know, the state of Asia's wives are there, and we say, now come out, come out, we want them to do this, and you come and lead and you help us in the kitchen, help us there, help us there. The uh, state of Asia's wives will not be there. And when we eventually see them, you know, they are cooking special food, and, you know, the, you hear the smell of food. Ah, is there a restaurant around here? What's the matter here? Then you discover that a special something going on. Deeper life. And yet, 
These are the people that are saying, they stand on sound doctrine, they are the pillars in the church. You are a caterpillar in the church. You are the people that are breaking down the pillars that we built up many years ago. Because of food, because of convenience, because of housing, because of mattress, because of bed sheet, because of pillow, because of little, little things. Tell me, my sister, when Moses went to the mount, 40 days, did he take mattress there? Did he take camp bed there? Ah, uh ah. -uh. When our Jesus, when he went to the mountain top to pray, did he take camp bed there? Mattress there? The mount of transfiguration that we read about in the Bible, do you see mattress there? What's the matter with us? Why can't we watch with Christ and come back to the old path? You see, when we begin to use force, pride, we bully on people and we take whatever we like because I am so and so, I am such and such, you are the one making the church to backslide because other people will see what you are doing and they will say, if so and so can get away with it, how about me? If so-and-so can get away with it, how about me? You see these people, let's correct our ways. I believe we'll correct our ways. Look at First Samuel again, chapter 2, from verse 22. Now, Eli was very old and heard all that his, son di his sons did unto all Israel. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. You see the, the whole outcome. The sons of Eli, the priest. You know the first assignment of the priest? The first assignment of the priest is to teach the Ten Commandments. After that, all the statutes and all the laws. After that, all the ordinances of, you know, sacrifice and this and that. But the number one thing, the Ten Commandments that the priests were supposed to teach. These were the people that were supposed to teach the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. They were committing adultery with the people. Now, it wasn't only private now. At the door of the tabernacle. Can you imagine that? What are we going to say about women that are in the choir? Not because they can sing well, but because they are the pastor's favorites. Pastor's second wife. They don't wed openly. They have not gone to the stage of offline and finish house. They don't have marriage certificates. They tell us they have one wife. That's what they tell the public. There's somebody you know that is called their wife. That's what they tell the public. But they have another wife. Second wife. Polygamy. God knows your house number. He knows your life. You are deceiving us. Ah, the trumpet will soon sound. Just a matter of months or years. And everything will be plain. I tell you, there are some women who are called area leaders. They are not qualified to be there. The people who are qualified because they cannot kneel down and, you know, give their body as, uh, you know, a gift so as to become area leader. They say, you are stubborn. You know Bible, you know righteousness more than pastor. If I call you and I just say, how are you? You'll be, you know, folding your hand and drawing back as if I'm not your pastor. You know doctrine more than your pastor. Eh, you, you know doctrine. Stay there. You will never be useful in this church. You all this other... Uh -uh. Are you the only sister in the church? All this... Uh, this sister is free. This sister, you know, but you frown your face and as if uh, holiness is frowning face and frowning face. 
and you, all the other good, good sisters, you know, they will smile and they are nice. And you never came to my house and even say, Pastor, I want to come and sweep your house. I want to come and cook for you. I want to come and wash your clothes for you. And sister, sister, and you say you are a Christian. Eh, hey, stay there. You see, so and so now is a woman, right? So and so now is an area leader. And if it's uh, leading house you want to be doing all through your life, and uh, be frowning your face and folding your hand, you will lead house fellowship. The, info, the instruction is that if you slow down and you, you know, you are good and you, you know, give your body and you are not that strict, uh -huh, you will have whatever you like. That's what they are telling them. God knows you. And that is why the church is backsliding. A man that is committing immorality in secret, what will you come and preach in the public? A, a dog. How can you as a dog come to the pulpit and then preach as a saint of God? You will not have the confidence. You will not have the boldness. And all your, you will never preach against adultery and against fornication. All that you will be preaching will be all the other subjects. There are many subjects you can find in the concordance. That's what you will be preaching. But the real thing that will knock the nail at the right point, you will never preach that one. How can you preach against adultery when your girlfriends are in the congregation? and You know, they are looking at you. Which mouth will you open? If you open your mouth and say, and the Bible says, if you look on a woman to lust after her, the, your girlfriend will close his Bible, her Bible and open her mouth and say, what? So and so. So you know that part of the Bible, and you did that thing with me two days ago. You can't preach that. And that is why the church backslides. When the pastor, the leader, is immoral. Well, we're talking about men. What are we going to say about women? Pastor's wife that has boyfriend in the congregation. What are we going to say? Pastor's wife that will not stay at home. Where did you go? Goes to see brother so and so, brother so and so, brother so and so. God knows your number. You think you can deceive us? As you see us, oh, we know things. We see you. That we don't, uh, you know, mention your name publicly and say so and so and point to you there. God has different methods. He knows your sin will find you out. And so these people, this is the reason the church backslid. And they could not stand on sound doctrine, the sound teaching of the word of God. Another reason for the backsliding of the church is false prophecy and deceit in pastors. False prophecy and deceit in the pastors, in the leaders, in Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Reading from verse 8. The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handle the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after the things that do not profit. Prophecy comes in different ways. And uh, you better make sure that you are really following the Lord. It is not everyone that says, thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord, that has the genuine spirit of God. Make sure you are really following the Lord. And do not just, uh, it's not compulsory to say, thus says the Lord. There is enough, thus says the Lord, from Genesis to Revelation. Except ye repent, thou shalt likewise perish. That does this says the Lord. Repent and believe ye the gospel. That is thus says the Lord. And the whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is thus says the Lord. And that 
Jesus Christ that he might sanctify the people he suffered without the gate. Let us go out therefore beyond the gate, bearing his reproach. That is, thus says the Lord, and that you gather in Jerusalem and wait until the power of God, the Spirit of God, will come upon you. Because as John baptized with water, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since, for ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. That is not says the Lord, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. That is not says the Lord. You have all the dust says the Lord in the Bible, and you are looking for another dust says the Lord, and you are becoming occultic. Becoming occultic. Because uh, you call the name of Jesus five times or seven times before you say what you want to say. What is that one? You lie on the ground, you roll on the ground before you pray. What is that one? You put on a, a kind of a particular spiritual Negro uh, music uh, before you can pray. The music will be there, you will be praying. What is that one? And all that you listen to is only promises of God. What is that? Is the totality of the Bible. But you know, as you bring in this and bring in this, and you say, well, I now, I can see this, I can see that. Balaam also saw. He saw prophecies. He saw vision. He had trance. Where is Balaam now? He's in hellfire. It is not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, that shall inherit the kingdom of God. Except those, only those that are doing the will of my Father who is in heaven. For many shall come unto me in that day. And he will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And have we not cast out devils in your name? And in your name have done many wonderful works. And after all that, I tell my sin and categorizing of all the miracles and signs and wonders, Jesus will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. Ye that work iniquity. Where did you get your revelation when you are not sanctified? You are beating your wife and you are prophesying. Where did you get your prophecy? You are getting angry and because your wife was a little bit late in cooking and you got so angry that you say you are not going to eat and while you even want to drink, drink the water, your wife is, ah, my husband, I'm sorry I was late. You threw the water on her and then you go to church and say, there's somebody there that has headache. Where did you get your word of knowledge? How can a man, no purity, no holiness, no sanctification, then come to the pulpit. Don't do this rubbish in our pulpit. This is not your own pulpit. This is deeper life pulpit. Our pulpit should be pure. But all these people that do all these things, then they come in front of the congregation and say, there's somebody there, shut up. Which person is there? Who told you there's somebody there? And then the Lord will tell you on the last day, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in iniquity. Get pure. That's what our teacher was teaching us this morning in the gospel landmarks. Purity before power. That we will be holy unto the Lord, before the Lord, all the days of our lives. When Christ comes to approach, take away the Adamic nature from you. And inside and outside, you are pure, transparently pure, continually pure, wholeheartedly pure. And you are pure within and without. Your language is pure, your imagination is pure, your thoughts are pure, your lifestyle is pure. Everything that you, your dreams are even pure. Because the devil cannot be coming to you and messing you up. And then you waking up, you know, here and there. You are pure in the dream and pure in the day and pure on the road and pure in the balls. And pure when you are sitting out with a lady. And there is no strange fire that is burning in your flesh. When you are sitting with a lady, you are pure through and through. It's after that purity you can come. 
to the Shekinah place where the Holy of Holies, where you have the Shekinah glory of God. And you can say, Lord, look at me. I've been at the brazen altar outside. I'm born again. I'm saved. And whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Because the seed of God remains in him, he cannot sin. He cannot sin because the seed of God is there. Because he's born of God. In this, the children of God are known. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. But now we are of God, little children. And we have overcome them because greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. It is when you have gone through the brazen altar, you have come to the holy place and the power of God. And the angel has taken the, the live coal out of the altar and he touches and he says, Your sins are cleansed and purged and cleared away. It is then he will say, Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Then you will come to the altar and say, Here am I. And the fire of the the Holy Ghost will pour upon you. But the kind of Holy Ghost you have that is still having secret sin, that one is not Holy Ghost. That one is your own imagination. That one is your own human spirit. But the fire from above, the Holy Ghost from above, that will come upon you and just fill you and overflow in your life, and then you will know that you are a real minister of the gospel. If we're going to keep the church from backsliding, there must be purity and holiness, and a righteous lifestyle, then there will be the power of God. That's what we call Christianity. All this other kind of stuff that you are dealing with, that one is, that's not the way. That one is not the way. You come back, if you, get, if you need to get saved again, get saved and get sanctified and let the power come afresh upon you. And so, then we will know where the prophecy is coming from. We will know where the revelation is coming from. We will know where the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom is coming from. We will know where the manifestation of the gift of faith is coming from. We will know where the working of miracles and the healing of sick. We will know where it is coming from. The discerning of spirit and the casting out of devils. We will know where it's coming from when we can see that you are pure through and through. Pure because only the pure in heart shall see the Lord. But you know, a man is not pure and is giving us prophecy, dream, revelation. Throw it off the window. That's what they are doing in those other places, white garment places. Why are you bringing those occulty things into our midst? We don't need that. I don't need healing from the devil. I, I never allow, I've never allowed anybody to lay hands on me if I know their lives are not clean. And I've had many people, when I was a younger Christian, even a one-year-old Christian, two-year-old, three-years-old Christian, you know, I've been like this since I was born again. I've, I've not been, I'm not a compromising kind of person. And, uh, you know, I've had people, and I can give you their names, you know, all over in this country. A particular fellow came to Unilag one day, and he was uh, ministering. You know, I just stood there, I was looking at him, and I pitied him, because I knew a lot about him. And then at the end of the whole thing, he said he wanted to lay hands on people. They are going to receive something. And because I was a lecturer at the university, you know, he called me. He's a bold kind of person. Uh, who He wanted to demonstrate. He said, uh, brother, so and so. He mentioned my name and said, let me lay hands on you and demonstrate. I said, me? I said, no, never. And he started saying, in Jesus' name, I said, not me. He pleaded, he pleaded. All the congregation at the Unilag, uh, at the Unilag Hall there, all the congreg they were looking at for about five minutes. He was still talking to me that, you know, because of the ministry and because, uh, you know, he wanted to show an example for us. I said, no, not me. If you want to lay hands on others, go on. But me, my own head is, you know, not like that. It's not every dick and Harry that can lay hands on me. You know, if you don't take your stand... If, you are, if every person can, you know, this one will come and lay hands on you, this one lay hands on you, no wonder after you say you are saved, you are having bad dreams. You say you are having this one. Because of all, do you know where they have put their hand? A fellow that will be, you know, doing rubbish with a woman before coming to the congregation to lay hands of, on me. If I had allowed them to lay hands on me, I will not be like this today. Thank God their hands never came on me. But you people that everybody is laying hands on you everywhere. If their hands are defiled and rotting, don't let them put their hands on you. And so, 
if the church is going to keep the real standard and the church will not backslide, then we must correct all these things. Number five, uninspired women and immature children in leadership. You see, there are times when uh, you have uh, children that are leading people, people that are immature, people that do not have the word, they do not have the life, they do not have the sincerity. They are just completely immature. Look at Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Then let us look at 1 Kings chapter 21. 1 Kings chapter 21. Verse 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. You see, women, if you are not, um, whenever you are talking to your husband, you take the place of the Holy Ghost. In the early years of this ministry, if I gave a message to a man, generally, their wives don't even know until they come to the, pul to the pulpit to preach. In the early years of deeper life. But now, under all sorts of excuses, they will be saying, so I can pray with you, so I can do this, so I can do this. Has the pastor called you? Has he given you a message? What message did he give you? Are you the Holy Ghost that is to give him inspiration? Are you the one that is to teach him what he's going to say? And while he's preparing that message, Ah, my darling, my brother, I, if you give this illustration, if you give this example, and all the people that have offended her in the local church will pump everything to the heart of her husband. And then when the man comes to preach, the people I knew before that can preach heaven down. I see their messages now. They have pumped them with another information. They cannot preach the word again. You women have done havoc. You have influenced your husbands in the wrong direction. In the wrong way. Leave them alone. Stay in your place. Do the little we tell you to do. And if there's any extra that I want you to do, we'll tell you. But well, don't get to the places where we have not put you. You are not the Holy Ghost. You know, sometimes it's the wife that determines who is disciplined in the church and who is not disciplined in the church. And in some churches, deeper life, if the pastor there disciplines somebody, if that fellow can go and lobby for the wife, and then the wife will say, don't worry. One week, you'll come back. And the fellow will go back to the husband and say, Ah, uh, darling, uh, you know, all these people, we ought to be patient for people. And actually, uh, you know, I had that sister's son. So what did she do? Ah, she's a good fellow. Maybe it's just a little mistake. When they are eating, she talks about it. When they are sleeping, she talks about it. And the man within one or two days will call the son and say, okay. And the man is not even wise. And he will say, it's my wife that saved you. You better go to her and go and thank her. Church. Church. They've destroyed everything. The discipline that we used to do in the spirit of God. The discipline that we used to be led from heaven. The discipline that we used to be led by the standard of the teaching of the word of God has become women's uh, rod to be using. And anybody, uh, if the wife of that leader is not happy with you, you are in trouble. We'll be pestering the husband. What do you think of uh, brother so-and-so in this, our state capital? She is so rude. Never knows how to say good morning to the pastor's wife. 
And this woman will pester her husband until the husband will find one flimsy excuse somewhere. You are late for coming to a workers' meeting, 10 minutes. It's not the lateness, it's the thing that the wife pumped inside. It's just looking for something to use. And okay, because you are late, go. And then uh, she'll get back home and said, Darling, I got that man today. Uh, which man? The man you have been telling that I should kill now. That I should kill his spirit, kill his ministry, destroy his life. I've done it for you. I've killed Naboth for you. Uh, everything. Naboth is buried now. And then the woman will cook good food for her husband to thank her husband for killing a worker in the church. You women. Church. That's why the church has lost standard. But you, pastor, when God chose you as a pastor, he called you like Abraham, he called you alone. And when your wife wants to intrude into the sacred ministry that is given to her by the Spirit of God, you tell her, woman, this is not family matter. This is a sacred office. And we are not sitting down together, ruling the church, I have been sent here from the headquarters. I am in charge. Shut up. You talk about cooking. We'll talk about that together. You talk about our own children, our little family. We'll talk about what, that one. About church, members in the church. You shut up. That will be a good church. But if, if we don't come back to the standard, and it is your wife that is ruling the church, telling you should not be preaching, who should be preaching, look, you give message to somebody. If you give message to somebody, didn't you pray before giving the message to him? That brother so and so, we're going to have a state retreat. And you will preach. And then you come back home. And uh, your wife has no business knowing who is to preach. What's her business in that? And eventually the wife will come around and say, ah, uh, have you finished preparing the program? Starting, they want to start story. They want to start havoc. They're looking for Nabo to keep. Have you prepared the program? Yes, I've, I've just finished. Um, who are the people that are, that are speaking? Because this retreat, you know, I've been praying and, you know, we won the power of God down. You don't mind her. It's a lie. It's looking for information. Well, brother so-and-so. Who else? Brother so-and-so. Who else? Sister so-and-so. Who else? Brother so-and-so. Brother so-and-so, have you told him? I just told him yesterday so he can prepare in time. Ah, my spirit doesn't agree with that, brother. Your spirit? That's your business. If the Holy Ghost appear, uh, agrees with the brother, that's all. Your spirit? Who cares for what your spirit agree, agrees with? My spirit doesn't agree with that, brother. Eh, what, I don't know. Anytime I just see him, you know, the way he walks, the way he does his face, the way he sits down, the way he, he even looks at a person like this, no respect. The way I see him, my spirit does not agree. What am I going to do now? Uh-uh. Well, anyway, if you say I'm your wife, and you love me, and we're doing this work together, we're suffering together, okay, the man will say, so I'll see what to do. Then the man will call the fellow and say, uh, uh, Brother, have you started preparing that uh, message? I I've almost finished, sir. Something occurred to me. I'm thinking, um, all right. Uh, don't mind. Let me take that message from you. Uh, if there's any other thing, I will give you when we get to the retreat. But uh, let me, don't worry. And whoever gives me, if I think I may even want to handle it myself. You understand? Uh, so, never mind. Another time will do. Uh, I'll be praying for us. Be praying for We are all working together. Whether we preach or not doesn't matter. I mean, everybody is working for God. They say, lie. And then I will go back home and say, my wife, you know, I found a method. How did you do it? Ah, you know me. You know me. Anybody I want. If you tell me to knock anybody, I know how to knock them. Church, the church is destroyed. We're not being led by the Spirit of God again. It's the wife that is pushing the man, pushing the man, pushing the man. And if you continue like that, 
Well, by the grace of God, there are some of us who will rescue the church. But you and your house will be destroyed. You are touching the church of God. God is raising up a brother and is putting his spirit upon him. And you say your spirit does not agree with somebody God is raising up. This one is not politics. This one is church. Let your husband alone. So he can give the message to whoever the Spirit of God directs him. In the early years, this is how we did it. And this is how we did the work that, by the grace of God, things expanded. But now, as we have come to this stage, and there are Jezebels, wives, that will not allow husband to have a free hand in doing the work of God. Please, we came to this Congress so as to brush off every corrupting thing in our lives and in the church. And I'm believing that this backsliding church is going to come back. And all the signs of backsliding that we're looking at that I'm talking to you about, God is going to purge us in Jesus' name. Then there is congregational conspiracy against the truth. When the congregation frowns at the truth, when the congregation does not love, does not like the real pure teaching of the word of God, they will be backsliding. And when there is preference for compromising preachers, when there is desire for temporal blessing above spiritual blessing, or when there is unchecked sin in the congregation, no discipline again. Everybody is just doing whatever he likes. And we cannot talk straight to them and get things corrected. Or when prosperity and abundance without holiness and zeal is the other order of the day. Or when there is influence of strange preachers on us. You know, uh, in the early days of this uh, church, all the cassettes we listened to, they were uh, cassettes of deeper life. But we have children now, we have people who have raised up in this church. For a long time now, they have not listened to the cassette from the headquarters church here. They listen to the shouting, screaming American preachers. A lot of noise, but no revelation. A lot of, a long message, but no conviction. That's what a lot of our people are listening to now. And you are taking food that doesn't have spiritual nutrients. All those cases, they don't have spiritual nutrients. And sometimes when I see some of our preachers preach, I can tell they have outside influence, the way they preach. You can easily tell. The way they talk, the things they say, and even their interpretation that is not rich and deep enough to bring any conviction to anybody. You can see that they have been going along with this superficial kind of preaching that brings no conviction to anybody. Let's remove all those cases, all, those, all the literature, and all the things that are infiltrating into the church. And when there is partial obedience, unfaithfulness, and insincerity, that's the problem with Saul, that he went out, to destroy the Amalekites. But instead of doing everything that he ought to do, he just did part of what he was supposed to do. If the church continues like that and the church becomes backsliding, will God just uh, allow the church to go on like that? No, there will be wrath and judgment for backsliding churches because God has no pleasure in a backsliding congregation. He always withdraws his presence from such congregations. The consequence of such withdrawal will be unanswered prayer. And when prayers are not answered, that in turn will lead to suffering under the power of darkness. It will cause sickness, mysterious death. In one deeper life church, that church, they were in the locality. They appear to be moving on. And they were giving, you know, they were writing to me and giving me reports of, you know, 
expansion and this and that, vehicle, transportation, increase in number, this and that. But nobody knew what was happening under the, you know, under the carpet. But something started happening. People were dying in that church. I'm talking about deeper life. I'm not talking about any other church. Deeper life, local church, a branch. This and not not a not a church of thousands. You know, in a church of you know fifty thousand, uh, somebody will die once in a while as they get ho old, and you know uh, you cannot uh, escape uh, because it's appointed unto men once to die. After this, the judgment. But. It's a small, in a way, we will, I will call it a small church. Not thousands of people, just moderate church. And this fellow will just die. This other fellow died again. And I was, you know, receiving information, mysterious death, accidents, a lot of things. Eventually, the pastor there, something struck him. And for, you know, all of a sudden, he couldn't walk. Couldn't move. And then the wife had been praying. But the wife did not know how to confront him because of what uh, she felt she knew. And said, ah, my husband, all that has been happening in this church, there must be a secret thing being covered somewhere. Eventually, the fellow opened up. He had been committing immorality. Not only that, he had been taking money from the family and giving to that other person regularly every month. And the family was, you know, just managing. And he would still take the money in the family and give to that other fellow. And the thing was on for some time. But now when the, when the wrath of God came and struck him, and the wife said, if the lion is roaring against this family, there's something behind the curtain. Tell me. And the thing came out. And the people over there to write to me to say, now we have discovered the reason for the mysterious death that has been taking place. And they try to cure the thing and, you know, they try to solve the problem. We don't know in your own church, your own local church, which is coming in, wizards coming in, familiar spirits, mysterious death, mysterious attack. Pastor's wife cannot sleep at night. What's happening? Pastor, you know the secrets. Don't hide it. Expose the devil. Let's purge the church. And then once again, the light will shine. Before that time, your heart will be dark, will be gloomy. If you keep that secret, the mysterious death will continue. The wrath of God will continue. Why are you going to die in backsliding? You get restored as a pastor, as a zonal leader, as a coordinator, as an area leader, as a woman rep, as a pastor's wife, as a worker in the church, you get restored and let's go back home and get the church restored. Let's rise up and pray.